Hello, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. And today we're going to be looking at creating this heart rate monitor or electrocardiograph in Motion 5. So let's see how that's done. I wanted to research how a proper display actually looks, so I went onto Wikipedia and I came up with this. And you can see that there are very clear phases that we need to emulate in order to be convincing. Uh, and we're going to do it with a particle system. So let's make a new group, Command Shift N, um, and hit the C key. And let's draw a small circle. And then let's center that up. Let's hit E to make an emitter. And change a few of these properties. Uh, let's set the life to 2, the speed to 0, and the birth rate let's set to 1500. Uh, and now let's come to the color mode and set that to over life. And we'll twirl open the gradient generator. Scroll down. Let's click on this top bar here, which is the transparency bar. Um, and create a new tab. And I'm going to drag that all the way to the end. And I can set the opacity for that down to zero. So now they fade out over their life. I'm going to remove that color swatch because we don't we only need one color. And I'm going to turn the blue down to nothing, maybe just increase the green a bit. And I'm going to turn on additive blend. So that's my emitter set up. Next, we are going to look at how to animate this. I could do this by animating the emitter directly, but I prefer to use a null object and then link to that. So I'm going to make a new group, Command Shift N. And in this new group, I'm going to hit R for the rectangle tool, hold down the Shift key and just make a square like that and come down here and center it up. OK, first of all, um, the particles need to travel left and right in a continuous loop. So let's set that up first of all. Let's come to frame 0 and set a keyframe. And I'm going to set that value to minus 961. I should explain quickly that my project is set to 1920 1080 and my frame rate is 2997, which will explain some of these numbers. And I've got a duration of 12 seconds. Um, so that minus 961 is half the width. So it's brought it to the edge, left hand edge of the screen. Let's come to four seconds, which is the duration of my loop. And I'm going to type 960. And that's created another keyframe. So now we have, let's turn off the emitter, it's slowing us down a bit. Um, we have our null moving left to right across the frame. We want it to loop, obviously, so in order to do that, we're going to use the keyframe editor. So Command H to open up the keyframe editor. Um, and if you haven't already got it selected, choose Animated from this menu here. I find it much the easiest way of working with keyframes because it means that whatever object you've selected will be highlighted or rather its keyframes will be highlighted in the keyframe editor. Um, you'll see that next to this, in this last column here, there's a tiny little button, uh, not easy to find, but that's where all the magic happens. So after last keyframe, let's set it to repeat. And I think you can see we've got a ghosted repeating pattern. And indeed, our null object is now moving is, is looping back to the beginning. Uh, now let's link our emitter to the null. I'm going to come to its position and click here, add parameter behavior, link, and I'm going to link it to the rectangle. Let me just call that null to keep things tidy. Let's turn off the null because we don't need to see it and come to our emitter, turn on the emitter and then those particles are traveling across, fading out, uh, and they will loop. Ah, 
but something strange is happening when they loop. And that's because of the way that emitters in motion respond to changes in position. Uh, they only update correctly every whole frame rather than subframe intervals. And we're going to have to deal with that. We're going to come to the particle cell of the emitter, which is that circle. And we're just going to keyframe the birth rate so that it's not generating particles for a couple of frames. So let's come to our first frame. And I'm going to set a keyframe. I'm going to step forward two frames and set another keyframe. And I'm going to come to four seconds and set another keyframe again. I'm going to come right to the beginning. Let's zoom in so we can see what's happening. I'm going to set that first keyframe to zero. Uh, let's frame that up using this fit visible curves in window option there. Let me zoom right in. There we go. Uh, we don't want that slope. So I'm going to select that first keyframe, right click on it, set the interpolation to constant. And now it will jump up to that second position. Let's zoom back out again. And as with the X position, after last keyframe, repeat. And now when we come to that four second point, we'll see we don't have that strange set of dots. OK, now we need to actually animate the heartbeats themselves. And in order to do that, we're going to have to animate the Y position of the null. Let's come back to the null. I'm going to turn off the emitter to make things smoother as we set these keyframes. Come to Properties. Um, now this is going to be quite time consuming and a bit fiddly, but what I'll do is I'll put up a table of values so you can see how I'm progressing. At frame 0, I'm going to set a keyframe 0. At frame 8, I'm going to click here and set another 0 keyframe. Let's turn off the X position so we can see what's happening. At frame 11, I'm going to make a little bump, set it to 15. At frame 13, I'm going to set it back down to 0. I'm going to come to frame 15, set another 0 keyframe. At frame 16, I'm going to set a keyframe of minus 40, so it goes downwards. At 19, I'm going to create the big spike up to 300. And then at frame 20, I can set it to minus 70. Um, let's zoom in a bit more so you can see the, the shape building up as I go. There we go. Uh, down here in the keyframe editor. I'm going to go to frame 22, set the value back down to 0, frame 26, set a 0 keyframe, frame 28, and set keyframe of 20, and almost finished, one second, set the value back down to 0. And now we have our nice shape that matches that example that I showed you earlier on. You can see how they pretty much match up. Let's turn that off again. Um, hide the keyframe editor and come to the emitter. Uh, and you'll see that we have that nice bump. Um, obviously, we need to do that same trick of having it loop again. So let's come back to the keyframe editor. Uh, transform Y position after last keyframe, repeat. And then we'll have this continuous set of heartbeats. Um, obviously there are a lot of particles being generated here, so the performance uh, is going to suffer a bit, but um, you, need, you need that number to, to get a smooth result. Okay, let's just do a bit of cosmetic treatment. Let's add a glow to this. Um, turn off the keyframe editor. Let's add a glow to the emitter, like so. Come to the inspector. Set the radius for the glow to 30. 
and the opacity down to 0.2 and I think that looks quite nice and now I'd like to make sure that that movement is not quite so uniform because obviously we've got exactly the same thing happening all the time so in order to do that I'm going to come to my null object uh, click here on the Y position and I'm going to add a parameter behavior which will be added to those existing keyframes so I'm going to select wriggle um, and obviously that value is much too high because uh, it's shooting all over the place but if we set it down to 8 let's set that to add and subtract um, and turn up the frequency to 2 and then get it to rewrite itself from the beginning there's now more organic variation that's without and that's with two more things I wanted to show you one of which is um, how to increase the distance between the actual beats themselves let's turn off the emitter just to speed things up and we'll come to the null in the keyframe editor hide the X again all we need to do is move these keyframes a little bit later uh, everything except the first one so we extend this portion here I could sort of just select them like that and drag them but I wanted to show you another trick which is to use this uh, transform keyframes tool um, and then you can drag it all the way around them um, hold down the shift key and just move them I find that an easier way of doing it it's it's, it's neater uh, the shift key is making sure that the movement is only horizontal and you can see that those gaps are opening up uh, and we've got larger intervals between the beats and the final thing I wanted to show you is how to get these keyframes to come down to a flat line so let's first of all transform these key these ghosted keyframes into real keyframes we'll come to the uh, keyframe editor after last keyframe generate keyframes uh, let's have I don't know something like that uh, five uh, loops there we go and now what I'm going to do is select this tool again I'm going to drag around everything except the zero value keyframes and I'm going to hold down the command key and drag that corner and as you can see that's shrinking those values down progressively which is very nice uh, let's do the same with these ones avoid the zero value keyframes and just I don't need to be quite so dramatic with those there we go and there we go uh, what needs to happen is that um, after last keyframe we set it to constant uh, and now that will flatline. What we also need to do is come back to our uh, wriggle behavior and at that frame hit zero in order that it stops wriggling. There we go, it's not moving around. Uh, and now if we turn back on the emitter and turn off the null, it takes a bit of time to update um, because of all those particles but you can see that they're getting smaller and then it flatlines so there you go I hope that was interesting thanks very much for watching and I uh, hope to see you next time for another Motion 5 tutorial